This is the ERP Advisor. The ERP Advisor's Overview of Workday. Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. This summer ERP Advisors Group is spotlighting the most prominent vendors in the ERP software market. Today we will be discussing Workday and their offerings and providing key insights into our experiences with these vendors. Sean Wendell is my guest today. Thank you for joining me. Hello, yeah. good to see you as always in person. Yeah, oh, Hello, know, for a long time. Shake right? your hand, yes, touch your hand. Good I to love see you. that. Good to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so we have been covering um, the a variety of vendors um, through this series and um, Workday seems to be one of the smaller mm. software platforms than some of the other like maybe behemoth type yeah. um, platforms that we've covered. Would you agree with that? Or? Well, I think it's a really interesting point, right? You've, you've worked with us for many years, right, at, at ERP Advisors and you've heard the stories. We have Monday morning calls where the right. team gets together and oh, we've been through this project and that project. and. I think from from our perspective, we've done multiple workday projects, but not as many. So, so Maybe the reality. That's what it is. I right? think that's what it is. Yeah, because you know you've got an organization that's thousands of people um, that's been in business since two thousand five, right? And um, they've they've established themselves as really a tier one vendor in the ERP space. So they mm -hmm. compete directly with with Oracle. Okay. They compete directly with SAP. Okay. Right? And, and those are the two. Those are the big boys. Yeah. yeah. So it's definitely one of the vendors that we look at from a tier one perspective. And okay. and we recently had a life sciences company that was global, very complex organization that went with. Uh, with Workday, I almost said PeopleSoft, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about yep, the PeopleSoft yep. Workday thing. Um, but they went with their financials, right? And uh, but in the market now, uh, we're working with a global uh, German company based out of Germany with with um, operations throughout the world, right? Mm -hmm. And they're looking at a new human capital management system. Okay, Workday comes up. Workday is really a. Um, it, it handles financials, it mm -hmm. handles planning, uh, corporate performance management, as well as a lot of HCM. And it, it really is the top of the HCM solutions that are out there. Okay. That's okay. that's the thing with, with Workday. So maybe it's not that it's smaller, it's just maybe more specialized or more niche for yeah, their offerings? Is, that's, is that what it is? That, 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 that's right, that's okay. exactly right. That. What, what we see in the market for Workday um, is, it's, and boy, I'm thinking with 10 years of, I guess, 15 of mm -hmm. watching that organization sort of evolve. So maybe that's where I should do is go back mm -hmm. to the beginning with Workday. Okay. And as usual, okay. Juliet, if you or I say something that's not quite <laughs> that's right, right. That's please right. inform us. That's right. We have a guy at, at Microsoft that um, that is a very good person of pointing out the things that we get right and the things we don't get right. Right, right. So, but um, we welcome that too because we, we do. don't want to be spreading any, you know. I learned a lot actually. He, correct, yeah, right? he provided yeah. some information about different That's versions of, of D three sixty five, and it's mm. extremely helpful. So I would please ask for people. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Let us know. I'll break the barrier there. <laughs> right. Good. Okay. So now, with that so, said. Um, and remembering, um, I uh, I was at, um, well, I started my, my career at Ascender, right? right? And worked with those guys and Arthur Anderson and all that stuff. And then I went to a startup where I was a product manager, which was sort of like a, you know, it was the, it was the roaring 90s. It was right at the end of the, the, it was like the tech bubble. It was just about to burst or it was right. just in the middle of it. And I took a job as a product manager for a startup. Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, that was kind of late. And it was kind of late to do it. But it was great experience, and, and I ended up going for, uh, then to JD Edwards mm. here in Denver. Uh, you know, big ERP um, company, right. middle mid-sized ERP, not one of the big ones, but mid-sized. And then PeopleSoft bought JD Edwards, oh, so okay. I was at PeopleSoft basically for two years um, okay. as part of that acquisition and then rolling in. And again, at that time, so this is early two thousands. Um, there was another company called Oracle mm. that then bought PeopleSoft. Soft, yeah, right. and that was a whole thing. I left before the ac the acquisition of Oracle. Okay. So I left when it was PeopleSoft. So I went to um, uh, uh, to um, uh, not Fremont, but to Pleasanton, California, many many times. 
and always loved in and out Burger. That's right. my, that's probably right. the only vendor I'll plug on these whole calls <laughs> is in and out Burger. We love in and out Burger. There's one down the road from Are us Are we now. looking for sponsors for we our We should. Podcast? Oh, yes. my gosh. I wish they were delivering. <laughs> right. That sounds so good. Maybe we'll right. do that. One of our interns is finishing today, and I thought, oh, oh we should get some in and out but they're going to take them to lunch. Anyway, um, so um, so I got to know the PeopleSoft organization really well. I was as a product manager for some new evolving technologies. Um, so so what happened then was Oracle bought PeopleSoft, and that was that was not a pretty sight. Mm. That was it wasn't a hostile takeover, but but it it, it, it was a um, it was it, there was there was antagonism on both sides. So um, not an easy transition. Not no. not an easy transition. Um, two very different cultures. Two, uh, you know, Pleasanton and Redwood Shores, very Bay Area oriented mm-hmm. companies. D- different kinds of cultures, a little bit focus different in the market. But see, PeopleSoft was focused more on the people side of ERP, right? Um, I implemented PeopleSoft at uh, level three, um, actually. Wow, I hadn't thought about that in a long time, which was a telecommunications company right, that ended right, up right. getting – Joe Nacho got thrown in jail over that one. But that's another story. Lots of stories in those olden days. Anyway, bottom line was um, when PeopleSoft got bought, somehow the founders um, of PeopleSoft were able to take a lot of money and start mm. Workday. And they didn't have a non-compete. That's what I was going to say. There was nothing where they could not do that. So, But, you know, that was a big acquisition for Oracle because it really established Oracle at that point with the J.D. Edwards customer base, with PeopleSoft customer base, and oh. the Oracle eBusiness Suite customer base as a truly formidable competitor to SAP. Okay. So, so it was really a good move for Oracle. It consolidated a lot of these products in one place. And we'll talk more about yeah. Oracle later, but it made a lot of sense. But Dave Duffield, who's a great guy from what I've heard, mm-hmm. um, and many of his, his key people left and then literally started Workday. And the cool thing about that was um, and of the major, the prevalent vendors, they probably are one of the youngest mm-hmm. Workday is, even over in NetSuite. Um, or even over Salesforce, which started a little bit earlier. Um, but but Workday was able to say, you know, this cloud thing, this ASP, it was called application service providers. Mm-hmm. This is the real deal in terms of how applications should be hosted in the cloud versus a company having to buy all this infrastructure. So we're going to build it optimized. We're going to build apps. We're going to basically rebuild PeopleSoft, but optimize for um, that platform. And okay. so, so, so Workday is a truly cloud, multi-tenant software as a service solution, like one of the purest definitions of that phrase, meaning everybody runs the same instance mm. of Workday. That sounds terrible to say that. Not everybody's in the same instance, right? right There's right, multiple right. instances of that instance, but the instance is the same. same across it's like the having board. a kid, you have 10 kids, but they're all the exact same kid, the exact same. Now, with each kid, you can dress them different, this sounds terrible, but whatever. I'm just going to go with it. You can put them on skateboard. You can put them on a bike. You can put them on whatever. But the, Ultimately, it's the same. Ultimately, they're the same. They're the same, right? right? And different people configure their instances a little bit different, right? Okay. But the main... The offering is the, the same. The offering is the same, which is okay. good because then you can roll out changes to everybody very mm-hmm. quickly. You can maintain the code base mm-hmm. inexpensively. You can't customize it as much as you can other types of software solutions, but it, it just the architecture is optimized for yeah. this new world that we live in. So long story short, um, that organization then, those, those gentlemen and ladies started Workday as we learned a lot from PeopleSoft. We have a little bit of cash in our mm-hmm. pocket. Let's do this right. Which is interesting because that's a little bit of what Next World is with the J.D. Edwards clan. Oh, interesting. Yeah, okay. but we'll talk about that yeah. later. Anyway, um, so now you have the workday kind of, of, of coming to market, right? And, you know, who's going to buy brand new ERP apps or HCM apps? You know, that's really risky. Why would you do that? Well, it's the people from PeopleSoft. Mm-hmm. They've done this before, right? And they went to market with really nice user experience and really nice tools, the total cost of ownership for maintenance, cheaper, mm-hmm. all that kind of stuff. But what happened was when they came to market, they came with financials and did okay with the financials. The adoption wasn't huge, but it was pretty good. And then they also had an HCM solution, and whoop, that really took off, hmm. really took off. They had global companies, HP, many others, that did um, take on their, their human capital management. And when I say human capital management, I'm talking recruiting and onboarding tools mm-hmm. and performance management, core HR, 
um, you know, all, all the talent, uh, uh, well, talent and performance and all the management, compensation management. There's like a whole universe of functionality around mm -hmm. HCM that they did really, really, really good with and have continued since that day to be the industry standard for HCM. Well, let me ask you this. Um, not knowing anything about PeopleSoft, did they have this offering? So did Workday evolve and, tr and try to do better than what they were doing at PeopleSoft? Or did they create something wholly new? Or both. Or both. Right? They created something wholly new with the concepts and the, the, the mind thought patterns and the architecture requirements mm -hmm. and even the business requirements that they had collected with PeopleSoft, mm. you know, they were able to use that experience without, I'm sure, breaking any intellectual property right, requirements right, and right. laws or agreements that they signed with Oracle, whatever that was, I don't right. know. But yeah, they were able to basically start from scratch, but knowing so, so much, 20 years, right? I the think. The experience they had behind them. Right? That's exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's, in a nutshell, a little bit about work. They did one more thing. They did also buy another package recently. They've bought multiple applications. Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca, um, she covers, she's helping us as always, yes. um, in our ERP Minute, she's covered a couple acquisitions that they've made for sure. But one of the bigger ones in the last several years was a financial planning and analysis or corporate performance management tool called Adaptive Insights. Mm. And it sits on top of a financial and sort of does okay. budgeting, planning, financial um, modeling, and sort of scenario planning and that. And that's been a good acquisition for them too. So that sort of diversified their market a little bit because that tool was sold to more mid-market companies. So Workday sort of positioning around that to maybe put the financials in the HCM in a mid-market company as well. Okay, so let me ask you this. You touched on um, the HCM and the CRM aspect of Workday. What other prominent features do they specialize in and yeah. they offer? So, so there's, the, there's the piece around the Hyperion competitor, which is called Adaptive Insights, okay. right? And there's a whole thing on that corporate performance management type of software. We probably need to do a call or something on that at some point, although I don't think that mm -hmm. many people are interested in it. So if people are interested, Juliet, okay. they need to tell us yes. and we'll cover it okay, in a heartbeat because we perfect. do it on every project. We always look at those tools. So there's that mm -hmm. piece. Okay. There's also some really nice reporting and analytics and sort of data warehousing that they're doing. Uh, I think Prism Analytics, I think, is the name of that solution. Um, there's a lot of very best of breed stuff that they do in the human capital management sort of mm -hmm. area where they've made some very strategic acquisitions of tools that do very specific functionality in that life cycle, the employee life cycle. Um, financials is really strong. Um, it's really good for multi-company, uh, multi-country, multi-currency consolidation capabilities. Um, and, you know, from a, from a drill down perspective on different business processes, what you see is Workday is really well suited for like human capital companies like us, although we're teeny tiny, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but for companies that are really are based on knowledge workers, on, on colleagues, employees throughout the world where there's a lot of people, um, Workday makes a lot of sense. When you get into manufacturing, right, or, you know, distribution, the, the, the application isn't made for that as far as I know. We've certainly looked. I don't mm -hmm. think there's anything new on the horizon, but I never would have thought that with others like Intact and they're developing manufacturing solutions. Okay. But Workday is usually driven more towards like a 5,000 person services firm, you know, global firm or 25,000 person HCM kind of an implementation, right? Or uh, in the organization that, that we chose most recently was a financials only implementation. Mm. The, the business operations were managed by other systems. Okay. So it's a little more complex of a solution. Well, that was going to be one of my questions is what industries does Workday seem to work best for or is the best fit for? Yeah. 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 And it's services for okay. sure. Again, those industries where there's a lot of people. But, um, but what, well, so you've got like financials and you got HCM. Mm hmm. HCM can work across almost any kind of business, right? Because it's human capital management. It could be a global manufacturer. It could be a global um, distributor. It could be a tech company. It could be a satellite company, whatever it is. Right. The kinds of companies that are going to buy Workday, uh, education, definitely education mm -hmm. and government, two huge areas for Workday for sure. Okay. Yeah. The kinds of organizations that are going to choose Workday, they really are centered around a human experience. 
um, that that user experience for mm-hmm. their people that they want it to be top the top of the top right okay. so you pay a little more for that for sure it can be a lot more on the implementation you got to watch that but they really want that kind of rich experience for their employees um, and so you see that human capital management really going cross industry that's the key there mm. and then like i said on the financials it tends to be more a bit larger organization that needs maybe really good just financials that can integrate with literally any system any kind of data source for the business process kind of like a manu- it's not going to run manufacturing but it would integrate with an n4 or integrate with SAP pull data up into Workday okay. that provides a little bit more elegant of a user interface for even the financial people. Does that okay. make sense? It it's, makes sense. Okay, it makes perfect sense. sense. Can you talk to us a little bit about what kind of partner ecosystem hmm. Workday has? Yeah, it's a pretty tight ecosystem, meaning unlike other vendors, Workday um, um, has has really just selected a few vendors that that they really um, represent or are allowed to represent Workday and implement um, the Workday solutions. So you have good partners on the HCM side. There's some on the financial side. Some do both. There is a big partner base that does the adaptive mm-hmm. solutions mm-hmm. as well, which right. might not have the ability to do HCM or financials. But a lot of those partners now are looking at doing financials. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a tight ecosystem, okay. and and I think Workday's really thought a lot about that. You know, other vendors have sort of said, um, you know, the more out there that are selling our wares, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, Workday has sort of said, no, we're going to sell the software. Some of our partners can sell the software, but you know, we can also implement. They have their own professional services capabilities for sure. But then they have these other select partners out there. Of course, there's the big four, big mm-hmm. three, Accenture's and PwC and that that have Workday practices right. for sure. And then there's some more national practices and then a little bit of regional but 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 not much and then there's some firms actually that do focus on implementing for mid mid market companies like who we usually work with okay so it's 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 mixed so it's probably it's by design it's by design that it's smaller that's right which is so interesting because other partners are like no i want to have lots of partners that's right they have like their fingers you know that reach all the different areas that they need yeah yes so can you talk to us a little bit about from your experience of working with different clients and workday why does workday win mm. over its competitors yeah um i think what i have observed right so no non-disclosures of confidential information or anything but what i have observed is uh the workday salespeople are really nice mm. it's true That's great it's great it's really, 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 really great. And easy to work easy with. Easy to work and accommodating with. And, yeah. Accommodating and, you know, very uh, consultative in their approach. They have great people. They know their stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, they're, they're pretty active in the sales process, though. Okay. Yes. What does that mean? I was hoping you wouldn't ask that question. Okay. <laughs> but I kind of was hoping you would. Um, they're, they're, they, they just... Um, I mean, Workday, this is good. This is why we do these calls, right? Is so that people that are really trying to figure this stuff out for real, we right. give them real feedback. Because there's right? a lot of options oh out God. there that it can be overwhelming and right. almost paralyzing, right? Yes. And to where people don't make a decision. Yeah, right? they don't know what to do. And right. so we need them to understand. Workday sales process is, it, it's, it's more like a dating process okay. than, say, you know, boy, I have all kinds of analogies I can't <laughs> use. <laughs> oh, Juliet, we've gotten too big. We have too much risk. We can't just sit around the phone and say, so I'm cooking the uh, meatballs and stuff like that. Anyway, yes. we're not going to go there. But the bottom line is that um, it's, it's a very comprehensive process. They really want to understand you. They want you to understand them. And they want to make sure it's a strategic fit. So they want to be okay with working with you rather yes. than you making the decision of working with them both definitely right? both yeah. but of, of the vendors that we've worked with as i really think about the lot of deals that we've done ugh, um yeah probably want more to make so sure you're a good fit more so than anybody else workday wants to make sure that you're a good fit not just you like them yes and it's good because it's not a it's not a product that can there's a lot of capability in this thing a lot Mm -hmm. right so you do want to make sure they want to make sure that the client's really committed to the platform that it's a fit with 
kind of their their kind of uh, view of the market and how they want to be viewed and in terms of what their customers are. And I'm not trying to make it sound like they're super selective and they're only going to go with a handful right, of folks. Right, right, right. But they're pretty selective. And but they it want, matters to them. It matters a mm-hmm. lot. And I, I, I like that in mm-hmm. that it, it does. It, it really does matter a lot. And you just have to be ready for that kind of a process. That's what I'm not saying, but I need to say mm-hmm. is it, it, we had a client recently that, um, the, um, who was this? This was somebody who was growing and they have a lot of growth expected. And um, they went to multiple vendors, and basically one of them, Workday, came back and said, you're just too small. Like, this isn't going to go anywhere. You're not there yet. And one could look at that like, well, why not? What's wrong with me? You know? Or I think the client said, like, that's actually really good because it is too much for now. Maybe we do this in the short term, but then we move to this other thing in the, in the, in the longer term when we do get bigger mm-hmm. because it's a premium solution. It is. It just is. And it just the client would have been biting off more than they that's needed, right? right? And, and Workday yeah. is more inclined than I would say other vendors to actually point that out, mm-hmm. which I appreciate because we'd rather know early on if it's a good fit or not. And if it's that's a good right. fit, they're all in. They will bring great resources globally to support mm-hmm. the sales process. They want to get to know the customer. They want to get to know the requirements. They want the customer to get to know them. They'll make their executives available in a heartbeat to folks. Mm-hmm. So I, it's a great process it takes a little bit longer is what I'm really trying to get down to but that's because they're really vetting between do we do you think we're a good fit do we think you're a good fit you know we're gonna get married mm-hmm. here and we're in it for the long term right so so that just good. means they care and not that others don't but the fact that they have that investment in making sure the client works for them too like it's a good fit is that's rare right. right that's right it is rare especially yep. in our industry just that's right. just be aware of it That's right. Okay, well, good. Yeah. That's good to know. You bet. Well, let me ask you this, too. Um, From your experience or the knowledge you have, what is Workday's pricing structure? What should a Mm. client, if they're considering Workday, um, what should they consider to expect? Yeah, great question. And and again, without getting into specifics, what we see is that um, in the HCM space, we'll break it out between HCM and financials. In, in the HCM space, um, the, the software costs, right? So we'll just talk recurring, the annual cost mm-hmm. for the software, mm-hmm. and then there's one-time implementation. Okay. The recurring is competitive. It's, it's in a range that other vendors are. You know, you've got everything at the, the, the higher end with SAP, with Oracle Solutions, ADP. You know, then you kind of come into... Ceridian, you come into UKG, blah, 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 all the rest. There's mm-hmm. tons, there's tons of HCM solutions. But um, but, but uh, Workday's overall kind of, of, of recurring cost is going to be right in that top range with the rest of the vendors, for sure. Okay. The implementation is pretty big. Mm-hmm. The implementation cost is an equivalent to some of the big guys and maybe even a little bit more, maybe mm-hmm. a little bit less. So it, it prices in a tier one level, right? Okay. So if an organization is 5,000 employees or more, Right, you're only going to be looking at those tier ones because you probably have global. You have other mm-hmm. requirements that are really deep. Um, but if you're, you know, below that, then the pricing tends to kind of be near the top. And I think Workday knows that. And mm-hmm. again, that's why they're talking to their customers early to say, does this really make sense or not? Right. right? So um, it's it's a little bit. So it's in range with the, um, you know, with the tier ones. Mm-hmm. But when you start looking at tier two HCMs like UKG, like um, like uh, uh, Ceridian, you know, I'd put ADP more near the top. But you know, those types, it's it's going to be priced a little higher. Mm. The software cost is going to be close, but the implementation is just going to be higher. It requires a lot of implementation. It requires a lot of time working through it. Mm-hmm. So right. you know, it's just more high maintenance. I'm just finally going to say it. <laughs> Now, but it's worth it. But okay, well that's what I was right. going to ask you. So does is a client if they're set that they want to work with Workday, then they would be more than okay with paying that, right? Or willing to pay that that's as right. opposed to trying to negotiate the price and then not sure that Workday's the fit for them. Right. Right? You bet. And that yeah. is the thing, right? Is that that Workday is communicating this up front. They're not holding anything back and that's why even for our startup that's um 
going to be pretty big. Mm -hmm. They're like, don't do us yet. Like, don't go there yet. You right, don't want right, to have right. this conversation yet. Interesting. Um, so, again, like I said, it's like they know what they are, and, mm -hmm. and others know what they do well, what Workday does well. And, mm -hmm. and folks that are maybe, maybe they don't have the internal resources, maybe they don't have – the dollars available they may want this product mm -hmm. but they just can't get it because it's just it's just doesn't make sense for them right. yet yet yeah but mm -hmm. I, I tell you in the last several years we've seen workday make a lot of play down towards the mid-market sap's also done that too mm -hmm. but um I, it's 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 part of a strategy that you have to know what you do well and what you don't do well and i i think again even from our standpoint um you know, the Workday solution is a very elegant, perfect solution for HCM. And even on the financial side, you just need to know what it's going to cost to do it. And those that are willing to pay and willing to, there's a reason why you would do that. There's mm -hmm. tags. It's very flexible. You can set things up in a way that could change your entire employee experience with this product, right? And that's worth it in and of itself, and right? It could be worth it. Mm. See, that's the thing, right? HCM software. This is a good tip for our listeners. HCM software return on investment calculation mm -hmm. is a little bit harder than ERP because you're really trying to quantify what's the benefit of the employee experience being That's up true. here versus here. Well, the automation in general mm -hmm. is important because it's more of a risk discussion. What happens if you don't have an HCM solution in place that's just in general, right? Well, you have HR specialists around the globe making decisions that could be the wrong things. Mm -hmm. And it opens you up to material risk. Employees suing you, right? For tens of millions of dollars, oh if not more. Oh boy. How much is the, the solution? Well, it's less than that. You just saved yourself, right? So there's that's the HCM ROI calculation in general. That's why we need HCM solutions. Mm -hmm. But now when you look at specific solutions, that's where it just gets a little bit harder to say, hey, is it worth it to do this premium solution mm -hmm. over something maybe that's less premium? And frankly, our mid-sized clients, that's a hard decision for them to make to go with the premium. Right. But as they get bigger, as they understand that benefit of that employee experience, man, it's a they will fight to, you know, tooth and claw to get work day um, in place and should because it's a great experience. So right. that's, does that, does that make all it sense? It makes Man, perfect that's a sense. Lot of stuff. It oh, makes perfect sense. It's very so, complex. And I think it boils down to what we've talked about for years now is knowing your needs. That's it. Right. That's it. You're like the yeah. know your needs <laughs> ERP advisors. Right. <laughs> I'm hardly the ERP guru, but I love these sessions because I am learning so much. Yeah. For sure. No, so. it's great. And and I love your questions because again, we're not doing these seminars for somebody who is a, you know, fifty thousand person company, frankly. That's not who this is for. Right. right? right. They know the difference between workday and Oracle and SAP and they're, they've done the contracts before. They're betting their jobs on you know a ten million dollar implementation. That's, That's not right. who this is for. That's right. It's for folks that are you know kind of maybe a little smaller, trying to figure this out, want the real data. And man, no matter what, we promise. And Juliet, that's why I love having these conversations with you because you ask yeah. real questions. So thank you no. for that. Well, thank you for sharing all your knowledge as always. You I bet. appreciate it. You so. bet. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, continue to be on the lookout for our uh, multi-part series um, that will advance your ERP knowledge and allow you to take advantage of over a century of combined ERP experience from our expert consultants here at EAG. Thank you again for joining us today. We'll see you next time.